beautiful. Okay, yes. Um, hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Um, my name is Bailey Brophy, like she said, and I just want to first thank um, Carolyn, Miranda, and Sierra for giving me the opportunity to talk to y'all today about childhood nutrition. Um, I am a student here at UA completing my undergraduate and master's degrees in the field of nutrition. And I just wanted to um, go ahead and put out there, I do not have any children of my own, but I have learned through my courses the importance of childhood nutrition. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So like I kind of mentioned before, um, the objective of this class is to just kind of um, learn little hacks about how to nourish your child um, and to just have them eat healthier. So um, some content we're gonna be covering today is how a child's needs differ from an adult's needs, some vitamin and mineral recommendations throughout a child's life, how to replace added sugar with more natural sugar, food label education and false food claims, how to build a proper lunchbox with snacks, some restaurants in Tuscaloosa with healthy kids meals, because what kid doesn't love to go out to eat? How to make healthy eating fun, easy ways to sneak in healthy food to your child's diet, how your diet affects your child's diet, non-food related rewards for children, and trading sit time for fit time. So why should I feed my child healthy foods? We could go on and on about the importance of why you should nourish your child with healthy foods, but I'm just gonna kind of go over a couple here. So as many of us know, obesity is on the rise more than ever before, and this includes childhood obesity. The CDC says that one in every five kids now are obese, and it is growing. And it's important to keep in mind that obesity affects children the same as it affects adults. Um, I feel like it's oftentimes in society, um, we think, you know, it's just they're going to grow out of this and these unhealthy habits that they have now, they're going to grow out of it. But this isn't always um, the case. And those unhealthy habits can follow them throughout adulthood. Um, healthy eating is very important to prevent dental cavities. Um, so those sugary sweetened beverages and foods can build up bacteria in a child's mouth and cause cavities, um, especially if they're eating those super late at night, maybe after they've already brushed their teeth. Good nutrition can help to prevent vitamin and mineral deficiencies. If your child's eating a diet low in vitamin and minerals, um, chances are they could become um, deficient in some of these. Obesity can cause type two diabetes in children. And we used to never see this and it used to be called um, adult onset diabetes matter of fact because we used to never see children develop type 2 diabetes but we can't call it that anymore because we are starting to see children develop this disease and quality nutrition can help strengthen a child's immune system um, just prevent them from sicknesses in school at school and those types of things and what children eat will influence their future diet choices and overall health kind of like I stayed before. So how is a child's diet the same and also how does it differ from an adult's diet? It's really important to um, keep in mind that children still need the same necessary food groups that adults do. So this includes our carbohydrates. So things like brown rice, maybe some sweet potatoes, um, things like that, whole wheat bread. They still need those healthy fats. They still need protein from meat or non-meat sources. They need vitamins and minerals just as adults do. And you can see here on the second picture from the left, it has the MyPlate recommendations. I'm sure some of you are probably familiar with MyPlate. And we wanna make sure that just as you're building your plate um, based off of MyPlate, try and build your child's plate um, based on those recommendations as well. So we talked about how their diet's the same as ours, but how, are, how is it different? Um, I'll tell you how. So portion size is a big way that it's different. I'm sure some of you have probably heard of the hand rule when it comes to portion size. So the rule here is that 
the size of the palm of your hand is going to be how big we want those protein sources to be. So the beef, chicken, fish, meat, like you see on this picture on the right. The size of our fists is how big we want our carbohydrate sources to be. And the size of the length of our thumb is how much we want those added fats to be. So your butter, your mayonnaise, your olive oil, your dressing, things like that. So more times than not, a child's hand is going to be smaller than my hand, than an adult's hand. So what does that tell us? That means that their portion sizes also need to be smaller. And as they grow, their hand will be bigger and so will their portion sizes. So kind of think of it like that um, in relation to um, portion sizes for your child. Another big thing is try not to force your child to eat all of the food on their plate. I'm sure that some of your parents um, said to you when you were a child, you know, you can't leave the dinner table until you finish all the food on your plate, or you can't get dessert until you finish all the food on your plate. I know my parents said the same thing to me. And the reason that we don't want to do this is because it doesn't really allow for a child to listen to their bodies and um, listen to their hunger and satiety cues. Instead of just eating until they're full, they feel like they have to eat until all the food is gone from their plate. And this can really lead into adulthood as well and develop these habits. And they think, well, I can't go to the next task until I finish the food on my plate. Maybe instead, you know, if they haven't touched the broccoli on their plate, say, hey, why don't we eat a piece of this broccoli um, before we get up from the dinner table? Or you haven't really had much of your chicken. Why don't we have two bites of this chicken before we leave the dinner table instead of making it all about the plate? So it wouldn't be right of me to talk about childhood nutrition without throwing in a little bit of infant nutrition in there. So I'm just going to touch on this just a little bit. The first year of a child's life is so important um, for proper growth and development. And breastfeeding, if possible, is very much so recommended because of its many benefits. Um, breast milk is known as the perfect food for a child because it provides all of the necessary nutrients that they need in their diet for the first few months of life. Not only that, it's beneficial for both the mother and the child. So in terms of the child, it can prevent certain allergies. Um, it helps prevent obesity and um, diabetes. And for the mother, it also helps to prevent type 2 diabetes. It can help bring the mother back to her original weight before she got pregnant. And the most important, it strengthens the bond between the mother and the child. And since infants eat and drink such small amounts at this stage, it's very important that we make sure that every little bite counts. So now that we've touched on infant nutrition a little bit, we're going to talk about some vitamin and mineral recommendations um, for all age groups of children. And um, we only have about three or four listed here, but all vitamins and minerals are very important for growth and development of a child. But we kind of picked some of the ones that we felt like were some of the most important. And you're probably very familiar with all of these, but we're just going to touch on them real quick. So first up is vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important for um, bone health and bone growth in children. And while we want for the number one source to be from the sun, um, I know the winter months are coming up and your child might not be playing outside as much. So there are some foods that they can get in their diet to make sure they're getting the adequate amounts of vitamin D. So some of these as listed on here are fortified cereal, fortified milk, yogurt, salmon, and eggs. And you can see here on the recommendations that as a child gets older, the amount of vitamin D that they need grows. So ages younger than 12 months need 400 international units. Ages 12 to 24 months need 600 international units. Ages one to eight years old need 2,500 to 3,000 international units. So you can see that big jump right there. And ages nine and older need 4,000. Next up is calcium, which is probably the number one mineral that you think of in terms of childhood nutrition. We always hear, you know, drink your milk. Um, 
So while milk is such a great source of calcium, some kids, as they get older, they might get kind of burnt out from drinking milk. I know I did. And then I was like, where's the chocolate milk? You know, I'm tired of drinking this plain milk. So to kind of prevent that burnout, maybe try giving them other sources like yogurt or different types of cheeses. That way they're still getting um, that dairy that they need in their diet. So for yogurt, maybe consider adding some berries or some granola to that to add some texture, add some flavor to it, make it a little bit um, more interesting for them. And same as vitamin D, as a child gets older, they need, um, they need more dairy in their diet. So the last one we're gonna talk about is iron. And I found this very interesting as I was preparing this presentation because you can see here that from ages 6 to 12 months, they need 11 milligrams of iron. And then it drops a little bit um, after 12 months and then slowly increases. But just to put this in a perspective, for the 6 to 12 month age range, um, 11 milligrams, that's 4 milligrams more than a grown man needs in a day. So I just kind of wanted to emphasize the importance of getting iron rich foods into your children. It's very important. And I have a picture up here of some different um, sources of iron and these are each two tablespoons of the food source just to kind of provide you an idea of how much iron is in each of these. And you can see here back again to the ages six to 12 months old, they need 11 milligrams. Well, two tablespoons of Cheerios is only 2.3. So just making sure that your child is getting the adequate amount every day. So next up, everyone's favorite topic, sugar. I know it's mine. Um, and I'm sure that you're probably thinking, oh, she's gonna tell me I can't have sugar. My kids can't have sugar. Um, and that's not necessarily what I'm going to tell you. Not all sugar is bad. Um, natural sugar is very good for you. Um, things like fruit um, and milk. But we want to try and stay away from those added sugars that are added in during food processing as much as possible, especially for children. The recommended sugar requirement is less than 25 grams of added sugar a day for children two years of age. Or older and it's recommended that children under two years of age don't have any added sugar. Instead trying to introduce them to those fruits so they can develop a taste for it and it's very very beneficial to their body as well. So just ways to kind of um, cut out that sugar intake in children. And just um, this picture was very eye-opening to me when I um, saw it. You can see here, this is a normal size Coke bottle. I'm sure we've all had this size Coke bottle before. I know I have. Um, you can see that in the total sugars, all the sugar in this comes from added sugars. And there's 65 grams of added sugar in this Coke bottle. And if you remember on the previous slide, I just said that it's recommended that children two years of age or older get less than 25 grams of added sugar in a day. So this is almost three times the amount of added sugar in this one Coke bottle than the recommendation. So just something to kind of keep in mind here. I know it was very eye-opening to me. Um, and added sugar is also one of the main contributors to poor health and weight gain in children, a lot of times it's not what they're eating, it is what they're drinking. So luckily that is an easy you know, fix. You can replace it with water, um, low sugar content drinks, maybe try some diet juices. I know I walk up and down the grocery aisle and just about every juice there is, there's a diet version of it. So maybe try that or making some homemade juice at home. This can be a fun activity for you and your children. And just try having less soda in the house in general. Um, it's very important, you know, if you're telling your children that they can't have soda, that mom and dad don't 
have it too. Um, Cause that would just be very confusing to them. If you're, you know, sitting on the couch or at the dinner table, drinking a Coke and you tell them, well, you can't have that. And they're confused, you know, why, why can you have it? And I can't. So maybe just try limiting the amount of soda that's in the household in general. Um, or maybe just making it like a once a month thing and not so much an everyday thing. So some food label education. It's very important to teach your children about a food label and how to read it. And the grocery store is a great place to educate your children on food labels. You know, maybe if you're considering buying something for them, picking it up, looking at it and showing them, hey, you know, this is where the vitamins and minerals are. This is the serving size and this is what that means. These are the number of calories. And these are the ingredients that are in here. Um, and also making sure that you're um, educating yourself on this as well, so that when you go into the grocery store and you're picking out food for your children, you know what saturated fat means and what added sugar means, how much is in it. Um, just to kind of be a little bit more aware of that. And there's also some different online websites and games that. Um, teach about food labels too so that it can help them and you learn about it. Another thing is false food claims. So just like food labels it's very important to stay educated on these. You can see in these pictures over here they make it um, very appealing to children by putting Barbie and Anna and Elsa and Spongebob on here. So kids, you know, they pick it up and they're like, I have to have this, you know, it's got Barbie on it. I need this. Um, and they also can make it appealing to parents as well because they'll add on their made with real fruit or first ingredient whole grain. And so you're like, oh, well, you know, it must be healthy for them. But just I would um, encourage y'all to take what's on the um, food claims with a grain of salt and just kind of do um, your own research on that and always remember that whole fruit is always going to be better than something that claims to be made with real fruit. Tips for increasing fruits and vegetables and just healthy food in general. I know that y'all are such busy people. Y'all go to work, you come home, you might pick up your kids from school and then you got to help them with their homework and you, you've got a million things you've got to do. You've got to cook dinner for the family. So the easiest thing to do, obviously, is just to reach into the refrigerator or into the pantry and grab, you know, the first thing that they see. But there are some tips and tricks to um, tr kind of avoid this and make it easier on yourself. Try, you know, pre-cutting and washing fruits and vegetables to save you time. And you can do this at the beginning of the week um, in a certain day. If there's a day that you have a little bit more time, maybe that's Sunday, do it then. Or as soon as you buy the fruits and vegetables, just go ahead, wash them, prepare them, maybe bag them up. Um, that way they're already portioned out and you don't have to worry about that anymore. That way your child can just reach into the refrigerator or wherever and grab that snack. You can grab it for them. Another thing is placing those healthier snacks in an area where it's easy for the kids to reach and maybe try placing the more unhealthier snacks and junk food higher up in the cabinets. That way it's kind of out of their line of vision a little bit and it's harder for them to reach. They either have to ask you to grab it or they can't really see it as well. I know if, I mean, if I was a child and I reached into the pantry and the first thing I saw in my line of vision was a little Debbie cake. More than likely, that's what I'm gonna grab. So maybe just try considering that, having the healthier foods within easier reach for them. The last hack I'm gonna talk about is packing the healthier foods on top of the lunchbox rather than at the bottom. Doing this enables the child to be able to decide if they're going to eat the fruit or vegetable or not. At least they have to think about whether or not they're going to decide to eat it. Whereas if it's at the bottom, they might eat all the other foods on top first and be full and then they don't get the nutritious foods 
because they choose not to eat them because they are already full. How to pack a healthy lunchbox. So I would say that the most important thing here is that presentation is key. And y'all, I don't even like cucumbers or tomatoes or even really cantaloupe, but this to me, if I had never tried these before, looks delicious and I would definitely want to give it a try just because the presentation here is so beautiful. It's so good. Um, and, you know, I kind of like to think of it as if you go to a restaurant and you order a meal and they come, they give it to you and it's all pretty, it's bright, it's colorful, and it looks like they really put forth the time to make it for you. Even if you don't like one of the foods that's on it, you're probably more likely to eat it just because the presentation looks so good. But if you go to a restaurant and they just kind of give you a meal and it just kind of looks thrown together um, you're probably not as likely to eat that meal that they gave you or not eat as much of it. And children are the same way. They eat with their eyes. So making them a lunchbox that looks really presentable to them will make them way more likely to eat it. And another thing here, um, going back to my plate, you can see how this um, meal has all everything from my plate in it. So they've got the grain for the carbohydrate. They've got the dairy from the cheese. They've got their fruits, their vegetables, their protein sources. So while you're packing a lunch box, try and really make sure that you're hitting all of those points within my plate. Some after school snack ideas. So before I get started with this, I wanna tell y'all a little story about myself. So when I was a little girl, I was in elementary and intermediate school, my sweet mom every single day would have either a Snickers or a Three Musketeers bar and a Coke waiting for me. It's a wonder that I'm a nutrition major, but she gave that to me because she said it made me happy. And also after a certain amount of times, that was what I expected from her. I mean, I knew that every time I came in the car, it was gonna be a Snickers bar and a Coke. But if she would have had, you know, some carrot sticks or some trail mix for me or a granola bar or something like that instead, I would have eaten that because that would have been what I would have been used to. So just kind of going through some of these homemade snacks rather than fast food um, is a great option. This can be something that you and the family do together. You can make homemade trail mix together. Pre-making snacks at the beginning of the week, kind of like what we talked about in one of the previous slides, just makes it so much easier. You can grab it, put it on the counter for them, and they can pick what they want. Um, and when looking at protein bars and granola bars, maybe try um, looking at the amount of protein, the amount of added sugars in there, and the amount of fiber, because the amount of protein and fiber is really going to play a role in how full it makes the child and less likely for them to snack. Some local restaurants with healthy kids menus. I know that it seems like everywhere we go out to eat, there's no healthy options. So you might as well just eat unhealth an unhealthy option. But I'm here to assure y'all that there are places in Tuscaloosa that have healthy kids meals. And when looking here, we also want to keep my plate in mind and looking at those major food groups. So you can see here at Nukes, they've got the carbohydrate, they've got the dairy, they've got the protein, and they've got applesauce for um, at fruit. At Tzatziki's, they've got the grain for the carbohydrate, the protein, and some fruit, Chick-fil-A, protein, fruit, dairy. So you can see here that they're kind of touching those points within my plate. So just try and keep that in mind as you're maybe ordering for your child off the kid's menu instead of just giving them a plate filled with all carbohydrates. How to make healthy eating fun. There's many ways that we can do this. First is try making fun designs out of food. You can see in this picture right here. This can be a fun activity that you and your children and you and your family do together. Give your child a toy kitchen set um, 
to play with food, as you can see these two children doing right here. Eating at the family or eating at the table together as a family, excuse me, is so very important. These are where some of my favorite memories were made um, as a child. And I still look forward every time I go home for Christmas break or summer break, me and my family eating at the table together, just so you can hear about how each other's days were, how each other's weeks are going. Um, getting away from a screen and really just sitting down, enjoying each other's presence is very important. And studies actually show that this can help really boost a child's self-esteem. Let them assist in setting the table. If a child feels as if they are playing a role in the food making process or something as simple as setting the table, they're way more likely to eat the nutritious foods that you prepare for them. And MyPlate.com has so many fun kids games to get them interactive with healthy foods and that way they can kind of see foods on a game to make them more likely to eat them. So they have like bingo, um, different like maze activities, um, coloring sheets, that type of thing. Making healthy eating interactive. This is so very important. I cannot stress this enough. Um, bringing your child into the kitchen to cook with you. Maybe try buying them an apron and letting them at least just sit with you in the kitchen as they watch you make the meal or getting them to help you assemble a salad simple tasks that way they just feel as if they are playing a role in this process teaching them about gardening um, make a garden together grow some fruits some vegetables some lettuce and then when it's ready y'all pick them together show them how to wash it and prepare it i don't know what child would not want to eat a food that they had grown themselves so just a little idea um, taking them to the grocery store with you. I know a lot of times, you know, you might you might have your list and you just want to go in and out. You got a busy day and you don't want them yelling in your ear, mom, can I get this? Can I get that? And I totally understand that. And sometimes you do just want to go to the grocery store by yourself, but maybe try every so often taking them with you and letting them see the different fruits and vegetables and healthy food and what you're buying and preparing for them. Making fruits and vegetables fun. I know that you'll probably look at these pictures and think that looks hard and time consuming. But I would really encourage y'all to take some time away from the TV, go in the kitchen and make it a competition between the family. See you can make the best design out of food. Let them use their imagination and then encourage them to eat it afterwards. Like I said, I don't know what child would not want to eat a food that they had prepared themselves. And it looks like this. I mean, this all looks great to me. Another idea is having tasting parties for the family. So um, my friend, Sarah Ann Ratliff, she actually helped me make this presentation. I've got a little quote from her down here. So she said, my family used to have tasting parties where we would try new fruits and vegetables, nuts, etc. We would rank each item we tried on a scale of one to five. It was a fun core memory from my childhood that helped me develop my love for healthy eating today. And these are pictures of Sarah Ann and her brother from when they were little, and she obviously still remembers doing this from her childhood, and now she's a nutrition major, so look at that. Um, but in all seriousness, this is a great way to let your kids be interactive with healthy foods and get them to try it. Ways to trick your children into eating healthy foods. Now, I know we want for them to try and eat these fruits and vegetables on their own without having to do this, but we might be waiting on a child's light bulb moment. They might not touch fruits and vegetables, but while we're still trying to get them to eat these, there are tricks um, to do. That way we can ensure that they're getting these in their diet. 
So maybe try um, hiding some healthy alternatives in different packages. So you see here, we've got a Capri Sun. Maybe try taking the liquid out of the Capri Sun, adding water and some crystal light. They will never know. They will never know the difference. Making your own healthy desserts. This can be fun. And also more times than not, making your own healthy desserts is going to have less sugar and added fats in there. And sticking vegetables into foods that your kids enjoy. There are tons of recipes out here, out there that um, show you different ways to do this. And you can also add vegetables into meatballs, meatloaf, soup, eggs. There are endless opportunities. Healthier versions of the real thing. So I know that we all probably have our designated, you know, this night is pizza night or this night is Taco Tuesday. And I want for y'all to keep those nights. Um, but maybe instead of using your typical recipe, try some healthier alternatives and just see how you like it. You can make just about any of your favorite guilty pleasure meals healthier and delicious. Um, so just to give y'all some ideas of where to start here for pizza, maybe instead of the normal dough that you use, try some cauliflower crust or maybe some pita bread or even some low carb tortillas as the crust. For a burger, you can get a whole wheat um, bun or you can even do no bun at all um, or like half of a bun even. You can choose some leaner meats. You can do ground turkey, ground chicken, or even some leaner ground beef. And adding vegetables to that burger, and maybe even if you do full fat mayonnaise, doing like some lighter mayonnaise. And what you eat really does affect what your children eat. And what you say about food will impact your children. If you try food and you say, oh, this is just the yummiest thing I've ever tried. Look how pretty it is. It's so bright and colorful and it's just delicious. They will probably try it. But if you say, you know, I don't like that or we don't eat that at my house. If you say that around your children, they will think to themselves, oh, I don't like this. Even if they've maybe never even tried it before, they've already established in their mind that since mom and dad don't eat it, then I, I don't want to eat it. And since mom and dad don't like it, I don't like it. Um, something else too, it sometimes will take several times before a child decides that they like a food. And I'm not talking like one, two, or even three times. This can take up to 12 times for a child to decide that they actually like a food. So maybe if you try to give them raw broccoli and they just hate it, they, they don't like it. Maybe the next time you give it, don't give it to them raw, try, um, try cooking it a different way and giving it to them. Um, some other hacks with this are to try the food with them, show them that you enjoy it. Even if you maybe don't, maybe just fake like you do and maybe they will try it too. And the last hack with this is when they're trying a new food, don't make their whole meal foods that they aren't familiar with. Give them foods that they're familiar with and maybe a couple pieces of something like broccoli or a vegetable that they maybe never tried or that they've rejected in the past. Food rewards for children. So children accomplish great things in their childhood. You know, they might make an A on a test, win their soccer game, or um, perform in a recital, and it's very important to reward them. But a lot of times, the first thing that we think of to reward a child is let's go get ice cream or let's go get some donuts. And I'm not saying that y'all can never do this, that's not what I'm saying. But we want to try and stay away from rewarding our children with junk food every single time that they accomplish something. Maybe try thinking outside the box a little bit, getting them stickers, um, getting them a small toy from Dollar General or Dollar Tree or Five Below or playing a game with them, taking them on a little sunset drive, um, playing their favorite song, just something like that. 
every now and then. And on this picture right here, if you're trying to get your child to try new fruits and vegetables, this is a great way because I know I would have tried to fill this thing up as a child. Um, so it's a mealtime reward chart. So every time that they try a new fruit or vegetable um, at any mealtime, they can stick this on there. In training sit time for fit time, it's very important that children go outside, go play with their siblings, go play with you, play with their friends. Um, children have so much built-in energy and it's very important for them to go and be active. Taking them on a walk or to the park or playground instead of them watching their TV all the time or playing on their iPad. And show them that mom and dad work out too. They see that you're putting forth the effort to go outside, go on a walk or a run, then they're probably going to get curious and they're going to want to go with you. Maybe try taking them to the farmer's market to get them to be outside and get some human interaction and they can even see the different fruits and vegetables and things that the vendors have grown and become more curious with those fruits and vegetables. So just to um, touch a little bit on everything that we've gone over today, make healthy eating fun for your children and whole family. Trade sit time for fit time. Just because a kid doesn't initially like a certain food doesn't mean that they won't always, and it takes time. Give your child a reward for trying a healthy food. Ch children like to be rewarded. Um, so just always keep that in mind. They, whenever they accomplish something, try praising them. Um, what you eat affects what your kids eat. And not every meal is perfect and kids will be kids, but putting forth the effort to teach them about the benefits of healthy eating will greatly impact their life. And always remember, you know, making them a delicious plate, sitting at the dinner table with them, interacting with them, letting them come and cook with you and Growing a garden together is you showing love to them. Thank you all so very much for your time today. And does anyone have any questions for me? That was very good. Uh, my favorite part was when you talked about um, letting letting the your kids like come in and um, like help you prepare dinner. Um, I know that my children love to do that. So See, I've got two resources I was going to share with y'all. Um, one is called Feeding Littles. Um, they I found them on Instagram. Um, they post some funny videos, but it's a registered dietitian and an occupational therapist that kind of um, they work with picky eaters or, you know, different things like that. So good ideas. And then if anyone does have picky eaters out there, there is a dietitian, um, Jill Castles. Um, she posts a lot of good, good resources, too. Someone said, thank you for the fun ideas about making butterflies out of fruit on their waffles. That's fun. I know I might have to try that myself. Yeah. <laughs>